So whoever said beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I kind of like this uh, d and Mimi, uh, must never have crawled this dungeon. Now we're talking about beholders. Beholders are pretty nasty. And what is great about the monstrous manual is it actually has um, a beholder on the front. You've got a beholder, you've got a lich, you've got a minotaur, a thyprene, and a, a red dragon. Probably an ancient red dragon at that. And I just recently decided to go and repurchase my advanced Dungeons and Dragons D&D Second Ed Edition Monster Manual, or Monstrous Manual, as it was called. And I just picked it up today. I went and gone to see my friend. In fact, what's funny about this story is, I literally gave this book to my friend, and I've gone back and had to pay 20 New Zealand dollars to get it back off him. I gave it to him for free, and now I'm paying to get it back. Okay, but it happens. How's it going, Eric? Uh, I'm glad you can hear my voice. I'm glad somebody's decided to show up. I know this was impromptu. I didn't advertise it or anything like that, but I thought we'd have a look through the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons uh, monstrous manual for today. All right, so let's, we're going to open it up in a second. On the back, um, your the various monsters you would sort of expect... And a little bit of description. There's a lot of monsters. There's 600 monsters. There's 400 monsters in the Dungeons and Dragons 5e book, and yet there's 600 in this thing. It is a big book. It's very, very thick, which uh, is part of the reason why I like it. But also, another element to this particular book, make sure I get it straight, is it has a whole lot of information that a lot of the other uh, newer monster manuals don't have which is why I've gone and purchased it. So let's uh, let's crack on. Hopefully I've got it on the screen. If my sound is bad or the video is bad, you let me know. So obviously, like all, all books, they try to advertise their products. This time they've put it in the front of the book rather than the back. I thought that was entertaining. And there's our front cover. And like all Monster Manuals, they have explained how to use the book, how it all works. I'm not going to go into that because that's really not my focus for today. Um, if anything, it's really just to flip through this and sort of talk as we go. Lots of different um, creatures, and as it happens, we've got the Arakokra in the very front, just like the Monster Manual for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. So one of the things, you have all the stat blocks. Now, if you'll notice, the stat block for this particular Monster Manual is pretty small, and I'm not even going to go into Thaco. I'm not even going to try to explain that. It's not really worth it. But the stats are very simple, it's very basic, you get a decent sized um, picture usually, well, sometimes I wouldn't say that, it, I feel like that's a little bit on the small side, but that's, that's alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live with that. What is really helpful is all the text, because the text isn't just a description of the creature, which we already got by looking at the image in the first place. Um, one of the things I noticed is that it actually tells you a little bit about those creatures and monsters. How to use them in combat. There's usually about three paragraphs of information on how to run your monster. Now, none of this is going to be useless to you. And it's probably what I'm going to use to base any future videos I do on monster tactics. Because they actually have a section on how to run them in terms of a combat. Which is hugely useful to anybody who's never had to run the game before, dungeon mastering for the very first time. Uh, there are a few sections, sort of only one paragraph, but it's not bad. Then you get uh, habitat. So I'm going to move move myself forward here a little bit. There's a section on habitat. Most of them have an explanation about where they live, what sort of society they have, really helpful information. Uh, ecology. Ecology, surprisingly, it's actually important to know how they operate in the ecosystem. Why would we need to know anything about a monster's ecosystem? What a ridiculous thought. The players are going to like kill these things really fast, take the XP, take the treasure. I don't know where you're going to fit your treasure on, on your creature, but hey, it's got to have pockets. It must have swallowed it. It's sitting in the stomach there somewhere. But no, there's actually ecology information. This is often, I suspect, a lot of the information that AJ Pickett pulls for his own videos that he does. Hugely popular, and I can totally understand why I watch them all the time. Uh, the other thing I noticed is that uh, there's usually a section somewhere along the lines near the front, and it's not always completely consistent, 
but it, it sort of explains sort of um, how these things operate in their world. So the doppelganger, for example, here. The doppelganger is a master of mimicry. Well, we already knew this. Bipedal. This is actually a pretty bad example of the kind of information you get in, um, in this book. Um, in fact, it's probably one of the worst ones I've seen. This is what reminds me of the Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual number three for 4th edition. Pretty sparse. The Draculich, huge amount of information on the Draculich. And dragons, we get dragons galore. Huge number of dragons. White, red, blue, green, sapphire. If you wanted dragons, you're going to get plenty of them. I would say unique dragons, there's probably more unique dragons in here than you're going to find in a modern Dungeons and Dragons monster manual. It's true. I'm still flipping through and there's still more monsters that, that are dragon-like. Got the dragon turtle. And why did I decide to finally go off and do this? You know, I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to do with myself in terms of this channel. And I decided I actually missed not having this book on my shelf. And also it had a whole lot of really useful information in it, which I can now use for future videos. And I'm not going to say I'm going to do a huge number of videos on the topic, but I'm going to do enough to make it worthwhile to you watching my channel from time to time. I don't really enjoy the rules side of the game. I know that sounds strange because my whole channel is based off this. So aquatic elves. I don't really need to know quite as much information as this on aquatic elves, but surprisingly there's a huge amount of information just on aquatic elves. Who would have guessed? So if you really wanted to know, there it is. Now, the new book, uh, Mordekainen's Tome of Foes, not Tomb, but Tome of Foes, has got quite a bit of information designated to the key races, and obviously deals with demons and devils as well. And I will actually do a video on the topic. I know I have, I have been... Um, I have been hiding, okay, so I haven't done a lot of information on it. But there's a huge number of really cool monsters in here, and plenty of information to use. Genies. I don't like genies in my game. I don't know what it is. Genies always sort of, um, it's a bit hard for a player to deal with. Something that can actually change the very fabric and nature of the world. So sticking them in there is, is kind of tough. It's like deciding, well, I'm going to have my main villain be Thanos. And Thanos has the Infinity Gauntlet, so um, what can they possibly achieve or stop me doing? Um, Cyclops, Cyclops, I'm actually a, a pretty big fan of the Cyclops, but it's never really used in a way, way that represents anything else other than a big bag of hit points that you dispose of. So um, one of the things I really like about the Cyclops is uh, Jason and the Argonauts and the story of Homer uh, where these are Cyclops that basically lives in a cave and captures individuals so he can feed on them and and has a herd of sheep. This herd of sheep apparently is there to feed it and Homer winds up having to try to escape by disguising himself as one of the sheep. And that's my understanding of the story anyway. Plenty of giants. Quite an unusual giant here, the Reef Giant. We haven't seen this in the modern version of Dungeons and Dragons. I haven't, uh, I haven't forgotten about you, Tommy. How's it going, man? The Gith. So the Gith, and what do you, what do you know? We've got the, uh, the Gith. Not the, the Gith, but the, the Gith. This is the rhino creature with that pistol. That everybody was saying, that's such a weird creature and monster. Why would you have that in a Dungeons and Dragons adventure? Why would you even put it into a resource? Well, honestly, there it is. Now, if you are really upset about the lack of information on the GIF, there's a huge amount of information in this book. So you can actually go and check it out if you really want to uh, have the GIF in your game and uh, you want to. Hippo creatures. Is it rhino? Did I say rhino or hippo creatures? You guys are going to correct me, I'm sure of it. Spell jam up. Let's go for it. Yeah. 
I like um, the idea of traveling through the astral plane. Get Yankee, moving on. Knowles, plenty of information on there. Gnomes, meh. you know, <clears throat> I'm actually quite surprised they decided to put halflings and gnomes into the new book, um, Tome of, um, sorry, Mordekainen's Tome of Foes. I'm actually quite surprised. I'm not sure why that is, but it, it's, a, it's a nice upbeat feel to it. I certainly agree with that. Golems. So what sort of golems have we got here? We've got, so this is where you used to have greater golems and lesser golems. And, uh, and they're detailed in here. So you didn't necessarily have a golem of uh, a particular nature. Um, and that was it. You could have really powerful golems or fairly weak golems. I don't think any golem is particularly weak if you ask me. Okay, so we've got here the bone, the doll, we've got a gargoyle, we've got a glass golem. I can't even imagine um, dealing with a glass golem. Would it, it's going to wind up um, with shards of glass spilling all over the, um, the player's characters, right? The scarecrow golem, um, although I think it's been replaced by just a plain old scarecrow now. And uh, the necrophilidus, the necrophilidus, well it's the skeleton heady thingy snaky what he thinks. The stone variants, the gorgon. So, you know, I know a lot of people are thinking, why would you even go and purchase this book again? It's an old publication. But honestly, I actually think there's quite a lot of information that can be used used in your game from here. And which is why I'm not going to start, I'm going to stop throwing my books away or trying to sell them because that was like, I can't believe how stupid I was whole bunch of information on green hags and sea hags although I think the Dungeons and Dragons 5e book does a pretty good job of covering hags personally here we start and get pretty wacky what's that the Hattori the Hattori the Harpy the Harpy we know about the Harpy the Hattori what the heck is that a haunt I think um, AJ has actually covered that particular creature not so long ago anyway so if anybody was interested the hippocampus. You know, um, my background is psychology, and when I think of the hippocampus, I'm actually thinking of a part of the brain. And when I saw this, the hippocampus, I couldn't help but laugh. It was quite, quite entertaining. I don't think it's a sort of monster you would have them fight, but maybe ride if they need uh, some help getting from point A to point B. And honestly, what is this? Is this just a skeleton in robes? A heracura? I'm not even going to try to pronounce that thing. Too hard. Too hard for me. You know me. I can't pronounce Dilly Squat. Homunculus. Hot Horror. The Hot Horror looks so different now. This is this is what it originally looked like. And now we get a... a let's get real. The older artwork, some of it was actually really bad. But some of it's actually pretty cool. I mean, a lot of this is actually not bad, considering. And I'm... Am I just about halfway through? They even include horses. I don't know why. A huge number of different um, human variants. Um, I suppose if you want to fight them, you can. The Hydra. I feel a little bit sparse on the Hydra. There's not an awful lot of information. I've been really meaning to do a tactics video for Hydra. So I will get round to doing that. Don't worry. It will come eventually. Everything eventually comes. It just takes time. The Intellect, Devara, Insect Swarm's a bit pretty, pretty familiar. I think this is what we now call the Cloaker. And the X, the X to B, B, I can't pronounce that, can you? Get a load of this. This is the Invisible Stalker. Their idea of an image for the Invisible Stalker is a blank square. There's literally none, nothing there. It, it, it is invisible. You can't see it. Ha! <laughs> okay. Um, the Kenku, the Kenku's changed a lot. The Kenku looked a lot more, I, I guess, a lot more angry. Like it's got a lot more issues potentially hasn't gone to the therapist enough whereas now they look more cute and cuddly rather than scary jackalwear these are tough things i always found those to be hugely difficult for any party the the cur the cur the kyrene the kyrene i don't even know what that's supposed to be so we start getting pretty wacky in terms of monsters pretty standard stuff um katoa and uh, kabolds a leech. The worst place to have a leech is where? I know, as a guy, I know where I do not want the leech. Um, and 
what is this? A lamb, lamb misery? Good lord. I think what they used to do is just take animals and just tack little bits and pieces on here and there just to make it more interesting. Uh, leprechaun. Uh, I've got a friend recently who's insisted that everything we come across is a leprechaun and has a pile of treasure so we cannot kill them and uh, we have to find their pot of gold. So yes, lots of different weird creatures in here. Alright, Tommy. Um, what have you got here? I brought and I am playing Gloomhaven. Oh, okay. Good game. I played it in a 5th edition game uh, on Monday nights at my house. And I made a room where up to 10 players can play. Uh, we are running in a, a tarmac module. 10 players. Man, the last time I remember having 10 players in my um, campaign was a long time ago. And that's hard work. You, you be gentle on yourself. The lycanthrope. So we're bears, we're boars, and of course we get the uh, the were fox. The were fox. This is the foxy lady. Ha! <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Um, we're rats, and of course there'll be a werewolf in here. We're ravens. We're tigers. The traditional were werewolf mammals, even covered um, basic beasts, which now in the modern book is in the back, but um, I still think it's not a bad way to go. The only problem is you don't get an awful lot of information if you squeeze it in there. There's not an awful lot of information in the modern book anyway. Mammals, covers mammals, different types of mammals, although I think you're better off just jumping on the internet and doing a bit of research yourself. The mammal herd. Okay, the man scorpion. Has anybody ever heard of the man scorpion? I, I know... I know that the man scorpion is from um, uh, the Scorpion King. We've got a Scorpion King. What was that? The Rock played that particular monster. I think he did a fairly good job since, since he was like CGI. So, you know, he, did, he, he worked it as best he could. Manticore, Medusa. Medusas don't feel particularly um, scary nowadays. Here's the male version. And a mermaid. Mind flayers, mimics. Um, I have some old miniatures that look like uh, barrels, a, a, a treasure chest, and a bed that look like mimics, and that's really cool. What I like is that they they have included some variations. A mimic can essentially be anything you want, right? And Miss the Crimson Death. Let's not forget the Minotaur, the Crimson Death. Now, this is not something you will find in a modern Dungeons & Dragons uh, monster manual. Although, I suppose the Vampiric Mist from the new book that's just been released, I suppose that would cover the, the basis for that. And, thanks Tommy, I'm glad you love my streams. I am trying really hard to be... Oh, there we go, there's the, the, the Vampiric Mist. It's included as well, which means it is different from the Mist, the Crimson Death. It isn't the same creature, just renamed. Mold. This is where, it's like taking ooze to another level, level, when you start saying, the mold that you find can kill you. And I live in New Zealand where we have what's called black mold. Grows everywhere. Horrible stuff. Causes all sorts of health issues. So I can totally understand this. So we get details on uh, brown mold, uh, russet, is it russet mold? Don't know what russet mold is supposed to be. And yellow mold, all of which are very dangerous. And you have to be careful what you uh, what you do when you get near it. Uh, Vigi pygmies, the mongolmen. Now, for those of you who like um, freaks and um, mixed sort of races and creatures, uh, the Curse of Strad has uh, mongolmen, and it's they're really cool. Um, it's a really sad story. I'm not going to go into any details because that would be spoilers and I know I need to actually cover the Curse of Strahd at some point since I, I like the book, I like the adventure and I haven't actually talked about it that much, not specifically to the book that is. Uh, what's that? A Morketh. What the heck is that? A Morketh. It's, it's like a fish creature with tentacles and weird looking hooky bits. A mud dweller looks a bit like a, um, a, a reduced size T-Rex with a thin on top. Mud men. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers uh, Scooby-Doo. If you ever watched um, Scooby-Doo, 
mud men were quite a common feature. Anything that sort of dripped bits and pieces off it and had no sort of major features, just arms and legs, and maybe an eye sockets and mouths, the mud creature. We still have the mummy. And we get the greater mummy, so a couple of variations on that. I don't like um, fungus men. Do you know why I don't like fungus men? It's not because it's not a good monster. The problem is, there's plenty of information here, there's huge amounts, there's like two pages of bits and pieces on it that will be useful to you. It's they're so slow. So I feel like my players, unless they sneak up on them, they're just going to shoot them at range, which tends to wind up happening. The Naga, made a Naga out of, um, what is it, uh, tin foil and paper clips and the various other bits and pieces not so long ago, a bit of putty. The giant octopus, the nymph, the ogres. It's actually, well, there's almost one, two, three, that's four pages on ogres and half ogres. Not too bad, actually. Uh, here we go, we're into oozes. I always liked jello, and we get the slimy jello ooze. We've got, now this one is the, the stun jelly, the mustard jelly. This is the one you want to actually, you know, this is what the one you put on your, your meat products to make it taste better, including an olive slime creature. So if you like olives, maybe you're Italian and you like um, your olives, a bit of olive oil, you can have, you know, find one yourself these, squeeze it really good, and you've got yourself a nice uh, supply of olive oil and some olives to eat. Olive slime, I'm not sure that sounds very tasty to me, unfortunately. And then we get a whole bunch more. So what do we got here? We've got the gelatinous cube, the orc jelly, the grey ooze is covered. Um, we've got a crystal, a crystal ooze. I didn't even realise there was a crystal ooze. Green ooze. I don't think there's anything here on the black pudding though. I don't know why. That's all a little kind of odd. The, slither the slithering tracker, another ooze-like creature. Not a, not a black pudding though. Orcs. Otiog. Now, Otiog, for those of you who don't know, this is the creature that is basically the big, huge garbage thing. It has two sort of tentacle things for grabbing on, and one of those, um, the third tentacle thing is not actually for grabbing, it's got eyeballs on it, so I can stick it up out of the uh, the garbage, have a look around, see what's uh, roaming around above it, and then it can come up and eat it with its great huge jaws. It doesn't really, it doesn't look like anything normal whatsoever. Owl bears, owl bears have changed, the design on them has changed so much over the years. And a pegasus. I don't know how many of you have watched Clash the Titans. I always remember the Pegasus from the original Clash the Titans. Not talking about the new one. I'm talking about the one uh, that had, um, is it Hamill? Oh, I can't remember his name. It was all stop motion anyway. For the life of me, I cannot remember. Okay. Uh, Phoenix. Quite a lot of information is covered on the Phoenix. So if you were really upset with how... Uh, the new book, Mordekainen's Tome of Foes, was dealing with the, the Phoenix. This gives you quite a lot of information, and it has casting abilities. It actually casts spells. Uh, you can cast Blink, Blur, uh, Continual Light, uh, Dancing Lights, Fine Traps, uh, what's that? Fire Charm. I don't even know what Fire Charm is. Is this where you can charm your fire so it doesn't burn you? I'm not sure. Okay, plants, dangerous plants. I'm not I'm not a fan of plants, we'll get to them. The piercer, which is just an over large roper, really. Uh, well, not an over large, it's the it's how the roper starts, right? Starts off as a piercer, drops on the ground. Not a very efficient way to actually kill anything. And certainly I don't know how we even wind up with enough ropers around to make life difficult in the cave, simply because how many of those piercers has fallen, missed their target. Or didn't kill their um, their victim on the first um, first fall. I don't know because they, they don't move very fast. It's not like they can get away. If you didn't kill them the first time round, you you toast. Very inefficient. Very inefficient. Okay, plants. We have the choking creeper, the man trap, um, the reach plant, the snapping saw, the thorn slinger, the thorn slinger. I throw thorns. Probably does. Yep. The Triflower Frond, kind of reminds me of Day of the Triffids. The Yellow Musk Creeper and the Yellow Musk Zombie. Is there a zombie? A plant zombie? Possibly. 
We're not finished though, because there's more plants. The hangman tree. Okay, so you've got a tree that tries to hang people. Sounds quite fun, actually. The Kelpie. I've used the Kelpie from the Isle of Dread, or Island of Dread, for those of you who would prefer to call it that. Um, the Ob the Oblivix. The Oblivix. Gosh, that sounds very sim similar to a creature that recently has been created. Uh, the Quick Wood. The Shambling Mound, which most of you will know about. The Strangling Weed. Unfortunately, not a lot of pictures in this section. The Sunju Giant and the Thorny. Aha! Plant. Intelligent plants. Apparently, uh, um, so for those of you who are a little bit worried there wasn't a lot, enough information on each of these, there looks to be like anywhere from two to four or five paragraphs on each of the plant and intelligent plant creatures. Poltergeists, and there we go, there's the deadly pudding, um, the black pudding. For those of you who are worried that it has been excluded, it has not. Okay, Rakasha, um, rats, you know, not, not fun. I have a rat miniature, and it's the size of a dragon. And I'm going to put it on the table one day when the players make that snide remark about, oh, we're we'll, we'll level one, and all we do is kill rats. And I'll stick this thing on the table, and they'll have uh, another thing to say about it, because it's like, I don't know, colossal size. That ought to scare them. Ramor has... The insect creature, revenant, rock, um, picking up an elephant there. Plenty of information on that. Rust monsters, ropers, there we go, there it is. And then we get into sea life. Quite a, that's like two pages on um, surgeon. Is it surgeon? Surgeon, surgeon, surgeon. No, they're not the sort of surgeons that... Um, that operate on your intestines or your inner inner workings. So forget about that one. The scorpion. I really feel like this is quite cool because you get a large scorpion, a huge scorpion, and a giant scorpion. So various sized scorpions that you could include into your game. And um, I've actually got two different size scorpion miniatures, but but it's just it doesn't quite fall in line with the modern book. Just just for those who wanted to know, I'm sure you can find different types. Thank you there, Ralph. Sarjan. Sarge Hojan. So Hojan. <laughs> sea lion. I've actually got a miniature that looks like this. Whether you believe it or not, honestly I do. I think it might be more um, tigerish in the front rather than um, lionish, but it's pretty close to this. Selkie. Just looks a bit like a uh, almost a humanoid like yeah okay that's weird shadow nice and simple keep it keep it simple right a, sh a shooty a shooty this this kind of looks like a mix of a uh, a king who has been transformed into a flying horse is that punishment or a, a, a leg up I don't know skeletons sirene Skeleton Warriors, Giant Skeleton, and Slard. Oh, tadpole creatures. Really bad. You do not want them laying anything inside you. And the Giant Slug. I actually have some Giant Slugs around my house. I try not to let them in. Snakes, Spectre, Wing Snakes, the Sphinx. Has anybody run a Sphinx adventure? where they actually included the original riddle that the Sphinx is supposed to ask. There's apparently an original riddle, and I didn't know what it was. And when I ran this adventure, one of my players actually knew exactly what the answer to the riddle was, and they knew the riddle too. So you know what I did? I let him go with it. I let him, him um, play the Sphinx because he was going to do a better job than I would of playing it. So hence, um, that whole encounter was a lot better, not because of me, but because of the knowledge my players had. Uh, okay, what's this here? I can see there's a whole bunch of um, comments coming through here. I'm just going to keep moving along as quickly as I can. I'll get back to you guys, don't worry. Spiders. We get every type of spider under the sun, including a gargantuan spider 
and a whole bunch of information on them as well. Sprites, gotta be careful of sprites and pixies. Pixies, man, pixies are dangerous. For those of you who think that they are um, a piece of cake, pixies are lethal just because of what they can do. <laughs> okay, uh, that polymorph is a big deal. Um, the Sturge, your giant insect creatures. Tabaxi, here we go, it's going right back. So it's not a new development. Tabaxi have been around a while. The, sw the swan, swan may, swan may, I don't even know what a swan may is. It just looks like a, f a feathered girl, really, as far as I can tell. Bird maiden, bird maiden, bird maiden, bird maiden. Taiko, what is that supposed to be? That is just a, uh, it's just a swan, no, it's just an octopus that's holding weapons. Very original. Okay. Tanari. There we go. We know what this is. We're not, this is the big one. And Thought Eater. Something that eats your thoughts. I think a lot of people actually um, uh, don't have too many thoughts to worry about. <laughs> it's alright. You don't need to worry about it. <laughs> it's not real. It can't hurt you. The Thigh Cream. Artwork's not bad, really. Honestly, it's it's pretty good considering this is a this is an old book. This is an old publication. Uh, the Trent, which I think I think the modern one looks better than this. This just looks like a tree uh, with no arms, and it's got sort of some eyes just over here and a mouth. That's it. Triton. I had a player who was playing a Triton just recently, and had a great time with that. It's just a shame I was unable to sort of continue with the campaign. And then we're going to scroll on through a whole bunch of trolls. Quite a bit of information on trolls because, as we know, there's different types. We've got the uh, the giant two-headed troll. We have the freshwater troll, who um, it's called the scrag. Uh, the saltwater troll, which is just a marine scrag. Uh, the desert troll. The spectral troll, or troll wraith. Uh, giant trolls, well, I thought trolls were already giants to begin with, so why do they need to be bigger? The ice troll, now there are ice trolls in the Rise of Tiamat. So though, if you want to have uh, an ice troll in your game, there are ice trolls in the Rise of, Rise of Tiamat. Check them out. And then this is the spirit troll. Umberhulks, unicorns. Not really a um, something you want to battle, but certainly really useful if you can befriend it. Vampires, and we cover female and male vampires. What is this? This is the the Wemic. The Wemic. It's sort of like a cross between a centaur and a very hairy individual who has never gone to the barber ever, uh, with black hair, who wields shields and primitive weapons. Whales. Lots of different whales. I think the whales are going to be far more interesting if you make them fly. Personally, it's a fantasy adventure. Make them fly. So it actually covers how they would operate in combat. Their, um, their society and habitat, the ecology, and it covers the giant whale, the Lothiathon, and killer whales, orca, and what's this? The Nar Narwi. Narwhale? Narwhale. What's a narwhale? I've got no idea. Uh, common in cold subarctic waters. It is called the unicorn of the sea. Ah, I see what they're basing it off. Oh, okay. Alright. Wait, and the Willow the Wisp. So, for those of you who were curious, because I've done a few videos on Willow the Wisp, at least a tactics video recently, there are combat tactics here on how they operate, a bit of information. And I'm looking through here and trying to find if it tells you what sort of type of thing it is. It's a malevolent entity that makes it home in the swamps, bogs, and moors. It subsides to lure unsuspecting creatures to their death. Well, we already knew that. But if you were unhappy with the way they have treated the willow or wisp and you want to go back to what it used to be, there's plenty of information in there and uh, you can check it out for yourself. The wolf, werewolf again, we already had lycanthropes, but I will. 
worms. This will be your um, purple worm, your giant blood worm, your rot grub. Ugh, those are bad news. And also your bookworm. So, so this is, I guess, going to really upset those, um, those mages who did not make sure to spray their spell book with anti-bookworm um, retardant. All right. Wraiths. The Xenon, Waven, Waven, Yeti, Yanti, la da 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 da. So I'm actually going to have quite a lot of fun with this, I can see right now. I'm glad I grabbed it, um, even if it didn't mean I had to pay $20 for a book that actually I already owned originally. <laughs> and it's got, you know, this is what's weird about um, uh, the books that we get nowadays. This has got an appendices or appendix. And um, it goes into some basic sort of uh, summoning tables. And then we do get, you know, how to summon creatures, so forth. But there's an index, a legitimate alphabetical index of all things to put in a monster manual. An appendix. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I know that in modern, modern day now it sort of it looks more like the contents page in the front. But um, there's something to be said for the good old index.